following program is an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports, the network of the Olympics. Live from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada, an important heavyweight fight. George Foreman against Ron Lyle. And that's George Foreman, former heavyweight champion of the world. He won it in January of 73 against Joe Frazier. Foreman at his very best then. The disaster in Zaire 15 months ago cost him his title when Ali knocked him out in the eighth. But look at Foreman here, pummeling Frazier, lifting him off his feet, winning the heavyweight championship. And that's Foreman's opponent today, Ron Lyle. If Lyle can do nothing else, he can punch. Here he is in his last bout against Ernie Shavers, Denver, Colorado, September 13, 75. Shavers, helpless under the barrage. Lyle, ready to put him away. And there he goes, Shavers down and out. So it's Lyle against George Foreman today. Two challengers for the heavyweight crown. And the fight today will take place right here in this scene set, the Sports Pavilion at Caesars Palace. For the rest of today's show, let's go to my colleague, Jim McKay. The downhill run is the king of ski races, a terrifying mile-a-minute ride with danger at every turn. As the Winter Olympics approach, Wide World journeys today to Wengen, Switzerland for the 46th Lauberhorn race. All of the great international stars are here, including the favorite for Innsbruck, Austria's Franz Klammer. We should get a line on who may win the downhill at the Olympics. Who will be king of the hill? Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by the makers of Vicks Sinex Spread. Noses prefer Vicks Sinex. By Sears, home of the steel-belted radio that ran the route of the Pony Express. Sears Road Handler. And by Rolaids, for acid indigestion, Rolaids. Rolaids spells relief. Consumes 47 times its weight in excess stomach acid. Day and night. Mile after mile. A thousand miles a day for 40 days. 40,000 miles. That would be a lifetime of mileage for many tires. But for a set of Sears road handlers, it was only the beginning. We took the same set of tires and retraced the rugged, historic route of the Pony Express. From Missouri to California. Road handler from Sears. The widest steel-belted radial we've ever had, with a wider radial design and even more steel under a deep fighting Sears tread. Road Handler from Sears. The tire that ran 40,000 miles and then took on the route of the Pony Express. Our widest radial design with more steel than before. The Road Handler, Sears' best steel belted radial. Only at Sears. You're looking at a live shot of Caesars Palace's main building in the background as we pan past the tennis courts. And we are talking to you from inside the sports pavilion. That's the scene set. We're awaiting the start of a preliminary bout. And hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. We're about to bring you what we think promises to be a slugfest, a legitimate heavyweight contest between two legitimate contenders. One, the former heavyweight champion, George Foreman, the other, Ron Lyle. With me to do duty at ringside is, of course, the presently number one rated contender, Kenny Norton, and you know all about Kenny, but what I want you to tell the folks right now, Kenny, is what you look for from each fighter in this bout. Well, I'm looking to see if Foreman has really shortened up his punches and to see how Ron Lyle is going to offset uh, Foreman's awesome power. All right, and as I said, we think we are likely to have a slugfest. We don't expect the fight to go all the way. Right now, 
let's take you to the World Cup Men's Downhill Skiing Championships in Wengert, Switzerland, and my indomitable colleague, Jim McKay. And a crack ribs. Uh, he is back skiing. Now, right now, let's go back to Las Vegas. Tom. I can't hear you. I, Don, can you clear it out for just a minute? I'm going on the air for the first time. Yes. Okay, the scene set presents itself. The Sports Pavilion, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. Joe Lewis, just introduced by ring announcer Chuck Hall. And the fighters have just come into the ring. Ron Lyle at 220, George Foreman at a deceptive 226. I say deceptive because he looks lithe and supple. With me to work this fight, Ken Norton, currently the number one rated contender for the heavyweight crown. And in the meantime, Ken told you at the top of this telecast that what he wanted to see about George Foreman was whether or not he was mentally settled. No secret about it. Many have felt that Foreman's psyche was materially damaged by the disaster in Zaire of 15 months ago. As for Ron Lyle, the question there will be, will he be able to get to Foreman? And yet, in the long run, many feel if Lyle can survive the first five rounds, he is the better bet to win the fight, Foreman's stamina having become suspect in the Zaire affair. Now let's talk about George Foreman. There's been talk of a change in his style since he's gotten the new manager trainee, trainer, the veteran and wise Gil Clancy. Can a fighter change his style this late in the game? I feel that uh, he can change it in the gym, but once he gets into the heat of battle and gets hit, he's very subject to go back to what he knows best. Uh-huh. Okay. We're going to be back. More talk with Ken in just one moment. All right. Apparently, we have just a few seconds left. And now the commercial is upcoming. In a Mercury Bobcat. And it's love at first drive. Mercury introduces the new 76 Bobcat MPG with a spunky 2.3 liter overhead cam engine estimated at 34 miles per gallon in the EPA highway test, 24 in the city test. Your actual mileage may vary. This solid little Mercury gives you hundreds of pounds more car than most small imports and includes a standard self-adjusting rear brakes, front disc brakes, rack and pinion steering, new high back buckets, Generous sound insulation. Handy rear third door. All standard. Love that Bobcat. Love that Bobcat. Best of all, three-door all wagon. Bobcat has sticker price less than many small imports. Love that Bobcat. Love that Bobcat. America. Love your Bobcat. At the sign of the cat. Okay, we're back live at ringside. The Sports Pavilion Caesars Palace. The fight about a minute away. George Foreman, former heavyweight champion against Ron Lyle. Chuck Hall, the ring announcer, is now making his welcoming speech to a very good crowd, which has virtually filled the Sports Pavilion. Foreman's record, of course, 40 victories, just one defeat. The knockout by Ali in the eighth round in Zaire. Lyle with a record of 31. Three and one. He lost a TKO affair to Ali here in Las Vegas last May. Jerry Quarry beat him, and then Jimmy Young ex unexpectedly beat him in Hawaii. The referee just announced by ring announcer Chuck Hall is Charlie Roth. Remember when Charlie Roth was a light heavyweight contender? He's about 50 years now. That's the introduction of Ron Lyle. Fighting out of Livermore, California, weighing 226 pounds, introducing George Foreman. Foreman. Okay, the ring introductions of the writers finished. Kenny Norton, sitting to my right, will be scoring this fight for us unofficially. We'll be bringing you up to date throughout the course of the fight on Kenny's scoring and, of course, his comments interspersed during the course of the fight. The referee then, Charlie Roth, age 50. Refereed around the Cincinnati and Pittsburgh area for a long number of years. Just look at this. The 
the face of George Foreman and for that matter of Ron Lyle each speaking for itself crossroads fight for each fighter if Foreman is to come back and get another shot at the crown he must win this fight and it would help to win it impressively as for Lyle well he couldn't beat Ali he couldn't beat Quarry if he's to continue, he'll be 34 years of age shortly. Foreman was just 27. He's got to win. A wild, almost amateurish right as Lyle came charging out. Foreman in the red trunks, Lyle in the white. Lagging his right leg behind him in the manner that Frazier did against Ali in the last two fights between those two. Effect of that is really to cut off the ring. Lyle is not a bad boxer, though he has a tendency to let the hand stay too low. Fighters feeling each other out. Lyle showing foot movement. George stalking, lagging the back leg, but not yet connecting with a stiff left jab. He tried to get first one in, didn't get it through. The second got in. I must say, Kenny, George appears to be in much better condition than in that abortive thing in Toronto last May against the five fighters. That's very true. He looks very good. He's using a very good jab. Very stiff, very Lyle stiff. got in a good left. George's face went back. Lyle has never been afraid of anybody. He doesn't know the meaning of the word fear. You know the Lyle story. Seven and a half years in Colorado State Prison. Learned to fight there. And as I told you earlier, fought Ali here last May, and Ali scored an 11th round TKO. A good right by Lyle. A good right by Lyle, and he's got Foreman in trouble. He's got him in trouble. George staggering off the ropes, and Lyle all over him. A surprising trend of events. George, George looking over here to Gil Clancy, sitting right next to me for instruction. You see George in trouble. A late, late flurry by Lyle, staggering George, who comes wobbling, really, back toward his corner. We're not breaking for a commercial. The round, not only Ron Lyle, but the punishment and the damage. Let's look at it in slow motion, Kenny. Okay, here See we go with a very right good right it. hand. Very good right hand by Lyle there. He set him up good with a jab, but he got a little excited at the end and couldn't really take care of him. But as I said before, Howard, it shows that Lyle has no fear of Foreman, none at all. No fear in Ron Lyle at all. Good punching power in either hand. Nothing wrong with Ron Lyle's left. As I said at the very top of the telecast, if Ron Lyle can do any one thing, he can punch. But I don't see any of the old Foreman confidence. The guy who knocked you out in the second round, Kenneth. Where is I, it? I feel he has the confidence. I feel that this round he must come out fighting and uh, take over. He'll be very dominant. The voice of Kenny Norton at ringside with yours truly. If he isn't dominant, pardon me, Howard. If he isn't dominant this round, then Lyle will get very confident and run away. Lyle right at him, but again with a wild swing. George trying to move, bouncing on his toes. That's the first time George got in two good short left jabs, and that's what he must do. Well, Lyle with a good left. George fighting back now. 
Howard, as you can see, Lyle is giving Foreman no respect, and he's pressing the action now. That could be a mistake, Kenny. It could be. Because George, George is fighting back now. He's fighting back, but uh, Lyle's very aggressive there, and he's catching most of the punches with his glove. See that right come around and land on Foreman. Foreman in the red trunks, Lyle in the white. And the advisors are yelling to Foreman, keep those hands up. Now Lyle is hurt! Now Lyle is hurt! Quickly, Foreman landed a left and a right and another left, and Lyle's in trouble. He's against the ropes, trying to cover. Now let's see if George has learned what to do with an opponent against the ropes certain it is he didn't know what to do in Zaire look at that left to Foreman's get in there and it's a different Lyle now he's a little shaky the legs just a little rubbery Foreman is a tremendous puncher no question about that Ken Norton can attest to that I told you we'd have a slugfest and that's what we've got very good counter right hand by uh, Lyle there very good rounds two very active rounds and the crowd loving it you heard Kenny say he came back with a good counter right Lyle did we'll be back I want to check the timekeeper here the, the official timekeeper is John Worth George will you check this because by my clock that round was only two minutes well, everything happens in fights. We'll find out about it. Now, this fight is being scored on the five-point must system. Mandatory eight count. In Nevada, uniquely, they also allow for a standing eight count, which is what you see in amateur boxing in the discretion of the referee. The fight is, call, uh, is scored by three judges. The referee has no voice in the scoring. I am advised that our clock was wrong, that the round indeed went three minutes. There'll be no... No saving by the bell. Fight is, by the way, using eight-ounce gloves. New York and California require 10-ounce gloves. Eight-ounce gloves, less padding, greater damage from the blows. More punishment, more knockdowns likely. Howard, if you notice, uh, Ron Lyle's uh, over right hand is working very well on Foreman's left hand. His left hand is down, and Ron's going right over with an overhand right. By the way, Ken Norton unofficially scored, of course, the first round for Lyle, the second round for George Foreman. I tell you, Kenny, Lyle must be careful. You're right about the use of the right. There it was again over Foreman's left. But Foreman's jab is beginning to get to Lyle's head, and Foreman's power is so punishing that he can end the fight at any time. That's very true, but he can't afford to uh, let Foreman really get off. He's got to be more aggressive and kind of force the action. So if, he, if he gets Foreman punching room and punch, uh, wait and uh, utilize his power, then this is all in Foreman's favor. Agreed. corner against the ropes but then again Howard I think Lyle is playing possum he's trying to wait for Foreman through a right hand he really just counter. Lyle just threw a good right hand Kenny Gil Clancy screaming hook to the body George hook to the body George just tried to hook to the body in response to Clancy's exhortations, but he didn't get through Lyle's guard.
Robert Foreman is pawing, looking for the one big shot there. And Lyle's trying to counter. Less than 20 seconds left, and this is the third round. Foreman the red trunks, Lyle the white. Lyle with a very good counter right. The right has been Lyle's best weapon against Foreman thus far in the fight. Approaching the end of the round. State Farm agent Jerry Black talks about life insurance. Money's important. It's important to me like it is to everyone else. However, there's a great deal of satisfaction derived from being a State Farm agent that has nothing to do with money. It has to do with helping your fellow person, helping a family, developing a life insurance plan which will satisfy their needs not only today, but 30 years from now. State Farm is there. See these balloons? They explode very easily. And we're going to drive a loaded 76 Ford pickup next to this wall of balloons over these bone-jarring 4x4s. One torch goes on the wheel and one to the door. Watch the suspension take a real pounding as the torch explodes the balloons. But the torch attached to the door doesn't. That's because Ford's exclusive twin I-beam suspension is designed to take punishment and not deliver jolts to the body. 93 out of 100 Ford trucks built since 63 are still on the job. We're back for the start of round four in what has been a very active fight thus far. The first round, Lyle staggered Foreman. Adam rubbery leg. Foreman retreating. The second round, George coming back fighting. George now looking over to Gil Clancy right next to me, getting instructions from Gil. If Gil is anything, he's a teacher. Master's degree in recreation. He's been teaching all his life. Whether boxers, kids playing in the playground, or a good right by Lyle. Kenny, you're right. He's been using that right beautifully over Foreman's left. But it's very effective. And Howard, we just found out for sure that the second round was only two minutes long. That's correct. Chet Forty, our producer, retimed the second round in our truck. Lyle all over. Lyle has Foreman in trouble. Foreman is down. It started with a right, then a left. Foreman looking over here. Lyle to the neutral corner. It's mandatory eight down. Foreman trying to hold together. Trying to keep his senses. Lyle putting on a tremendous demonstration. Now trying to move in on Foreman and end it. Remember how invincible George Foreman looked through 40 bouts. The man who knocked out Frazier in the second round to win the title. The man who knocked out Ken Norton, the man next to me in Caracas, Venezuela, in the second round. What's happened to him? Well, in the 15 months since Zaire, he's been relatively inactive except for that charade in Toronto against the frightful Bob. Now, Foreman fighting back. Oh, Foreman is in trouble. Lyle caught him with a good left. Now, George, now, now, George struck back. Now, now, George fought back with a magnificent right. George fought back. Lyle was, Lyle let himself open for that. He got overly aggressive there. He was very excited. And Foreman was throwing hard desperation a punches. A minute to go in a wild fight, just as Lyle apparently had George in trouble. George with that punching power that we talked about in prior fights. Lyle is now, Lyle is now ready to go. Against the ropes. About 40 seconds left in the round. Covering up against the rope. His handler screaming to form and hit him in the body. George at the head. Lyle is now wide open. He is right. Lyle trying to swing back. This isn't artistic, but it is slugging the way the public wants it. Lyle now trying to fight back. Only 10 seconds left in the round. Now Foreman was staggered. Foreman was staggered by a Lyle left. The Foreman goes down. Foreman goes down. Lyle fights back. Lyle. Foreman has no saving by the bell, but Foreman is up. Foreman is up. What a fight, Kenny. Well, this is the, the slug the slugger's path here. They're both men are leaving themselves wide open. As Kenny said, both fighters leave themselves wide open. Call it over the slow-mo, Kenny. Here we go right now. Both fighters leave themselves wide open. They're both relying totally on power here. George is using his strength. He was hurt. He comes back and he staggers Lyle. 
Foreman goes down here with a good, very good Lyle punch. They're both working very hard, and they're both utilizing their power for getting boxing. As I said, I would hardly call this an artistic affair, but at the very beginning, we told you we looked for a slugfest. And most people, remembering George's absence of stamina at Dar here, had the feeling if Lyle could get past the fifth round, his chances would materially improve. That's very true, and Lyle has been known to come on in the later round. He's very good, his stamina is very good, his punching power is good. And so now the question is if George can recover and keep continue on here in the later round. Kenny Norton at ringside with Howard Cosell. Fifth round action underway. Howard from here on in, I think it's going to be a match of power and a match of stamina. I think Lyle has the middle edge right here. The two men both seem wary already, and who could blame them the way they've been punching them with the damage they've each been rendering? A good left by Lyle. Foreman holding on. We go, here Foreman we go, Howard. Staggering Foreman. all over the ring. Lyle against the ropes, throwing the left uppercut. Foreman in trouble again. No bounce in the leg. Foreman's in bad trouble now, and Lyle's trying right. to execute with the hook. And Foreman's hands are down, if you notice which is very good for Lyle's hook and overhand right. Foreman looking over here at Clancy for advice, and yet he doesn't even seem to be with it. Kenny made the point that George's hands are down, and so they are. George is falling forward over Lyle, trying to hit back. This is really a heavyweight fight, Howard. It's total guts here and power. George got a series of left jabs in there, then a right. And they both can change right hand power right there. Good right uppercut by Lyle. Foreman again in trouble. You see him falling forward onto Lyle. Incredible fight, utterly without boxing skills, just punching away. Each fighter, in turn, leaving himself open. Both men are really working here. Foreman's using fire in loud, waiting just a little too long. They're both fighting. Loud's got to come back with now the down. Wow, down to the canvas. Foreman punching him again and again and again when it looked like George was done. This time it may be over. This time it may be over. Lyle's not going to make it. Lyle, he's not going to make it. A knockout in the fifth round by George Foreman when it seemed Lyle had command of this ever-changing bout. The ebb and flow of the action almost unbelievable. First one, then the other. Foreman floored twice. Foreman floored twice in the fourth round. Coming back to win. And in just a moment, we'll be back. I'm going up into the ring to talk with George Foreman. And out at the Winter Olympics. Coverage starts February 3rd. So, we're back at ringside with the winner in a fifth-round knockout of Ron Lyle, George Foreman, in one of the wildest, most topsy-turvy scraps we have ever seen. A, George, congratulations. B, when you went down for the second time in the fourth round, did you begin to think it was all over for you? It was all courtesy due to uh, ABC being the last time I was on. They said it was not too serious, so this was really a serious bout. I was off, I was rusty, and this is what happens to you when you stay out of boxing. You get knocked down, but I, I'm still, I feel I'm a champion at heart. I can always get up and win fights. I think that all Craig should be given to Ron Laws, because he's all right. a tremendous individual. He took some hard punches, and he gave some. He sure did. All right, let's take a look at the action, and you describe it, George. Well, I think that right now I'm concentrating on doing with him what he's been doing to me, hitting me with very good punches. And uh, Gil Clancy, every time I look over, he never did lose faith in me. So I thought, well, why should I lose faith? I got knocked down, and I said to myself, this is dirty, low down, low life, good hard hitting young man. I got to get this right very effectively. Don't you agree, Gil? Yeah, no. Lyle did. Yes, he did. Yes. He, there's no doubt Ron Lyle is a tremendous fighter, and I think that the pitch is nowhere near through with Ron Lyle. He should be back in the fighting for the title. 
And I think that he can win on a given night also. I'm, I'm rusty, but I'm following some advice that was given to me by Kid Rapper there and Gil Clancy. I had a hard fight. And I created a great condition and the reason I won it, because I've been out for a long time. Weren't you? Weren't you hurt there by Lyle, Justin? Well, you know, I'm rusty, and I'm going to be hurt by a lot of things, even when he slapped me and hurt. So right now, I'm getting George Foreman together. And I'm never going to give up. I'll die before I give up. That's right. The heart of a lion. The, the heart, heart of, of a lion. lion. Next time I fight, heart of a lion be, will be written on my robe. Right there, he seemed to have had you again. I don't really know where you've got the reserve strength back to pummel him. To, to Kid Rapidez and Gil Clancy, and of course, the great years that Dick Sellers spent with me, he put some, some great ammunition in there also. To the left, Jeff. The left That's jab is started to come back. His face snapped back. The left jab is a throwback to the 1968 Olympics. <laughs> Against the owner Shapula. That's right. First introduction to the great Howard Coaster. Look at that. The left and then the right by Lyle. Gil, Lyle you were sitting right next to me, and I heard you say, Gil Clancy, it's all over. You thought it was over for your own fighter, but you never let your fighter know it. True or not true? Then I turned around. I turned around. The always said, who's in trouble now? Ron Lyle. That's right. There's the no here it comes. Even when I got knocked down, Gil started smiling at us to say, just keep moving to the right. <laughs> so he's been preaching and fighting. Now watch, here it comes, George. Yeah. So I decided no giving up. I got him going. Bill Cosby had told me earlier, keep going. You don't want to hear none of this stuff. That was it. That right was the final block. There's no substitute for action in the ring. Whether you're a piano player or a boxer, you got to have action. And that's a sure display of rust. Thank you, George, and congratulations. George Foreman, we'll be back to talk with Ron Lyle in just one moment. Yeah, it could use a little help. What's wrong, Charlie? It can use the greaseless protein groomer, Protein 29. Protein? Well, hair is protein. Protein 29's got protein that's absorbed into the hair. Oh, it goes into my hair. Right. Oh. So the protein formula makes hair easy to manage, helps it look fuller, thicker, and helps it to stay that way. Oh, it looks great, honey. Men in Protein 29, liquid, gel, and sprays. <laughs> dull and commonplace occurrences of day-to-day -day living, one thing stands out as a completely unique experience. Cold 45 malt liquor. Hey, listen up. I got news for you. Tuesday night, right after Happy Days, you're invited to meet Laverne and Shirley. That's us. I'm Shirley. This is Laverne. Of course that's us. Who do you think they think we were? Doris Day and Sandra D? Don't start Laverne. We're on national television. Whoa! Laverne and Shirley. I'll be there, too, because I'm their guest star. Now, listen, I want you to watch, because they're very close friends of mine. How close, girl? Premiering Tuesday at 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC. Back at the Sports Pavilion, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. Another preliminary fight. This time, it'll be totally anticlimactic, believe me, about to take place involving Ronnie Harris, a gold medal winner at Mexico City in 68. Ron Lyle is staying in his dressing room. He's understandably not in the mood to be on the air right now. We'll be back later in the show before it ends to recap the incredible action that took place here today and let you see again that fifth round when Lyle apparently had Foreman, but in the end it was George Foreman who had Ron Lyle knocked him out. Again, we'll be back. Now let's go to Warner Wolf in New York. Very good, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. A wide world. Recently, the National Drag Racing Championships provided our wide world of sports viewers with a real insight. This was Chris Economaki as he described the event from 